Good morning, beloved ladies. It is the white lion's gate of 888, Monday, the 8th of August. And I say white lion because that's where I was in April. So beloved ladies, taking full use of this alignment today, I'm going to share openly the whole vision that I see, feel and hear on the inside, the whole vision for the Temple of Sophia. As you probably know by now, this body of work is a mystery school. It is an entire legacy and lineage that has always been here and will most likely always be here, especially if those who receive the wisdom act upon it and take regular leaps of faith. The first stage is what we're doing now, coming together with the women, going deep, releasing opening, healing our sisterhood emotions, feelings, memories, restoring the sisterhood, restoring the roots of the temple, healing our association with the body, sexuality, love, goodness, Returning to innocence, becoming joyful, playful, sensual, free. Step two, that woman invites her beloved into the same space, into the temple. Stage two is when the men come in and receive the deep fountain of youth, life, truth, joy, love that we have been drinking from. Can we share ourselves? with the men. And what would that mean to us as women and as a temple? What would that mean to us? And all the wonderful emotions, memories, thoughts and feelings that go with that second step. Are we holy enough, deep enough, wise enough, mature enough to be able to handle or rather embody the sacred energy and keep our intentions and desires pure? Can you imagine, beloved ladies, how the men would feel coming into that space and place within them and also a real environment outside of them? Can 
you imagine the amount they could let go of, the depth that they could descend into without being taught anything, but simply being well enough to allow the feminine womb space to take them down into the deep. So much could be received and so much could be given. The third and seemingly final step of the vision that I see is of man and woman coming together in circle holding a unified vision. By this point our minds are completely clear, clean and focused. Our sacred hearts are open. Our wounds and horrors are activated. We are all in communion with our divine part, human part, masculine and feminine parts. And we sit together in a circle in Yapyum with the lingam inside of the yoni. We go in to sacred love making and it is that and it isn't that but for now that's the only words I have for it in a quiet sacred yet deeply pulsing space The feminine fields unite. The masculine fields unite. And the masculine and the feminine unite. All of our divine parts become one divine part. All of our human parts become one humanity. And as we hold the unified vision, we deeply open, we deeply breathe, and we simply allow the unknowable to happen through us. This work shall be done for a greater reason than for those who are present. It is done for the planet. Every man, woman, child, animal, fish, bird, insect, element, seen and unseen powers of creation. It is the deepest offering. It is the high altar of human expression and offering to something beyond its own self. To get there and be true, we have to heal every wound we may have with the feminine and then we will have to heal every wound that comes into play with our beloved and our beloved will have to heal every wound that he experiences through interacting with us. The sexual force 
will have to be taken to a quantum height, leaving nothing behind. The Lilith and the Pan is integrated with the Eve and the Shiva. There is no light and dark sexuality. There is only sexuality. The body needs to become sensitive and attuned to the sacred. The mind has to become still, receptive, deep and open to receive gnosis, direct communion with the mystery. I see this happening next year for some of us. It is an impeccable sacred space that I shall be opening to myself personally and with my beloved Pete for as often as I am able to. As you know, beloved ladies, I have my own fears and uncomfortable feelings around this, but I shall overcome them because I simply have to. And if I don't, I am pretty sure the beauty of our beloved Creator will simply ask someone else to step into this role if I am unable to fulfill it. That is why I run a very tight ship. That is why I talk continuously about humility, innocence, God and prayer. Without these robust, refining interactions with our Creator, I do not believe humans have the gravitas to do it, to become it, without profound depths of humility, willingness, vulnerability, and the deep thirst to say yes, and the fragility that that may bring when we're not really sure what we're saying yes to. So beloved ladies, as this temple space keeps going deeper, so will the path get narrower. I must ensure the impeccability of this process. Not because this is some kind of neo-tantric spiritual community being experimental and pioneering. But because I believe this level of intimacy with others is the birthing force of the Great Mother desperately requires for all, in order for her to do what she needs to do. Having 
played around the edges with all of this, I, as human, can tell you, it gets into the blackened roots of your conditioning. Deep relational conditioning, ideas around love and intimacy and partnering gets trodden underfoot by a sacred slipper. The approach is scary. Once you're in it, it's natural. Beloved ladies, or anyone else who's watching, I would love to know your comments, your responses to all of this. And may the grace of Sophia Wisdom be within us. <laughs>